Hey everyone and welcome back to FTC Team 18172 Uplift Robotics tutorial series. Today we're going to be talking about case statements for FTC Robotics, specifically in Android Studio. So what are cases and why are they useful? Well, cases or case statements are simply blocks of code that the program chooses to follow. Based on some criteria in the switch, a case is chosen and run. Cases in Java are extremely valuable in FTC programming, and that's due to the fact that basically all of autonomous is sequential, so it's in a linear format, like you start at some point, you move to the next thing, you move to the next thing, you move to the next thing. So with cases and switch statements, one can break apart the auto program into individual movements, allowing for better debugging and version control. So an example of cases and switch would be a program that could have a case for parking, a case for driving under the bridge, and a case for scanning something. And your switch statement could have to do with time, could have to do with like maybe position on the field, something like that. And case statements also clean up the code for testing purposes. And to test different cases, you can simply comment out each implement, Im, implementation into the program and find the problem or success. So here's an example of a switch and cases in action. So here we have, this is like the variable grade, and then that would go in there. So switch based off of what grade is. So if this was B, then it would do case B. If it was C, it would do case C. So right now it's A, so it does case A, and it'll print excellent. So that this is the powerhouse of all of this, is the switch statement, which chooses one of these cases and that can be really really valuable especially in FTC for robot so now let's move on to the code hello everyone and uh, welcome back to this section of the videos the code section and we're gonna be going over the case statements in the code and uh, this is what the autonomous looked at like before you'd have like all everything together and it's hard to tell what steps are going on right so you want to kind of separate it and organize it a lot more and that's what case statements are used for so the first thing we have to do in order to create case statements is create something called an enum an enum is written like this and then you give it a name, so uh, I'm going to call it state. And then and here is where you put all the names of each case statement, so all the different steps that you want to have. So like the first step, I want it to move forward. It has to be all capitals and then comma. And then the next step, I want it to move backwards. And I, I want it to move left. And then I want it to move right. And then on the last step, semicolon and that's when you finish your enum statement so the next thing we have to do is um initialize this enum statement and to do that we can say state and then give it a different name I just, i'm just going to do lowercase state equals state dot the first um step that you give it so forward and then semicolon and um in order to use your case statements you need to have something called a switch a switch is a multi-way branch that uh, allows you to access different parts of the code at uh and is better for organization skills uh in coding so um to do this you have to say switch state and this is the name that you gave it up here and then um, in here is where you can start doing your case statement so the first case statement you would say case dot forward and then you have to put um, a colon a colon and then you can start typing stuff in here so you can say um, I want to move. I can put the st first step in here, so move forward. 
for that much time. And then after you put what you want it to do in that state, you need to say break to let it know that, you're, that it's done. And then, but if that's the only case statement that you're doing, then you would be done. But sometimes you need to go to the next state. So if you would want to go to backwards, then you could type backwards in and then you can put this in right here and then set the power to negative. So if you want to move from the first state to the next state after it's completed its job, you would say state is equal to state dot backwards. And this, once it's done, it will take this to this state. And then um, you can do the same thing for the rest. Uh, um, move. Turn left. And then I'll do one. Or 300 seconds. Oh, whoops, forgot to go over there too. Okay, so um, one other feature that you can do with case statements is you can skip states. So like um, if you want, if you're in the forward state and you end up not wanting to use this backward state, you can just change it to left like that. The last thing you need in these case statements is a default case. A default case is basically if you're not if the state is not a switch statement is not able to go to any of these cases then it will go to this default case so um, you need to add the default case into the enum so default comma and you can at the end of all your cases you would say case default and then just say break or something. So you just want it to end if it's able, not able to go to anything else. And that's it for the coding section. Thanks for watching everyone. And don't forget to leave any comments for video suggestions or questions in the comment section below. Uh, we have all of our social media links in the description. And at the end of the video, there'll be links to other videos like our CAD series. And we also have science experiments, FLL programming, and a bunch of different tutorial series. Um, thanks for watching. And this is Uplift Robotics FTC Team 18172.